Hello, welcome to the place online. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are around the world watching us. Jesus is Lord, and we are so glad you've taken time out today to be with us and join us as we continue our study. We're on a series titled Christ Contemplations. And as we study about who Christ is to us, what Christ is to us, what we have in Christ, what we can do um, in Christ, we came into this teaching on righteousness. And we've been studying about righteousness. We learned about the kinds of righteousness you can have or that's available in scriptures. We came, up, we came across the benefits of righteousness, and that's what we're studying now. And last week we began looking at power. Today is a day I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, most of the most of the church world call it Pentecost Sunday. Um, so for those who are charismatic or Pentecostals, they like to address today as the day that Max, which historically is correct the day that the Holy Spirit descended on God's people at that upper room um, in Jerusalem. But we're going to talk more about power today as we're looking at benefits of righteousness. Praise God. We're going to listen to this wonderful song. I love the song so much. It's a song by um, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. Uh, your name is a strong tower. After that, we're going to get into the service proper. I'm going to hear God's word today. So invite your friends, invite your family members, be watching us on Facebook or YouTube, and it's your first time, welcome. I want you to connect, uh, click on the like button, click on the follow button, click on the subscribe button, depending on which platform you're watching us from. And we are going to have a time with the word today. Praise God. All right. So we're going to listen to this worship. Then we'll get ready and go do a deep dive in the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Whenever I call you, you always can make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, to you belong all power, Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way, your name is a strong tower, Jesus, your name is a strong tower, Jesus, to you belong, to you belong all power. Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. When we pray in the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee must bow. When we pray in the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee must bow. When we pray in the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee must bow. When we pray in the name of Jesus, every knee. Every knee was bowed. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. To you belong the power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, 
you make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. To you belong all power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. You will come and make a way. When we call on the name of Jesus, you will come and make a way. Your name is Jesus, you belong to Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is us, we make Jesus, your name is a way maker. Jesus, to you belong to Father. Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Sister Rose, I see you. How are you doing this morning? God bless you. Jesus, 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 call your name. You make a way, your name is a way maker, Jesus. Jesus, 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 call your name. You make a way, your name is a way maker. Jesus, your name is a strong tower. Jesus, to you belong all power. Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, tower. Jesus, to you belong all power, Jesus, wherever I call your name, you make a way, your name is a strong tower, Jesus, his name is a bulldozer, to you belong all power, Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. Your name is a game changer. <laughs> His name is a game changer. Glory to God. You know, when you when you know his name and you begin to function in his name your life takes on a whole new meaning it takes up a whole new a new purpose you find a whole new purpose for living welcome again to the place online this is a sunday morning service here at what culture and we're so glad you have taken time off your busy schedule your busy life to fellowship with us and fellowship with his word. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we honor you. We glorify your name. Thine is the greatness. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power forever and ever. Thine is the glory. Precious Father, we've gathered together this morning with your children from around the world to hear your word, to be impacted by your spirit. I pray that your word will fall in the fertile soils of our hearts, 
and produce results in our lives in Jesus name amen praise God so in our study of Christ contemplations we came across uh, where we said and second Corinthians 5 17 Christ is more than a name Christ is a location in God is a place in God and we began looking at the character of the citizens of Christ the people who live in Christ what are their lives supposed to be like how they describe from the Word of God and we found out that one of the key attributes of those in Christ is righteousness and there's a when you study the Bible you'd realize there's a huge difference between righteousness and right living right living as taught from the scriptures is a product of righteousness You cannot live right and become righteous because of your living right. In fact, when I think two or three weeks ago when we looked at this, the Bible has a word for it. God says in the book of Isaiah, that kind of righteousness or that kind of intention smells. It's called self-righteousness. So, but you know, righteousness causes you to live right. Righteousness makes you live right. Like um, a male, I'm appearing before you this morning. When I woke up this morning, I didn't think about a mascara. I didn't think about foundations on my face. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I didn't think of eyelashes. Why? Because thinking those things are not consistent with the nature of being a male. You see, but if you're a lady, it's natural to think that way. It's natural to do those things. You see that? So God pays attention to our nature. And really from the scriptures you'd find out that there are really three different natures that the Bible talks about. Three different distinct natures. And now when I'm when I'm dealing nature, I'm dealing in the realm of the spirit. I'm not dealing with natural things. Okay. So what are the three natures that God talk, that the Bible talk about, or the Bible does reveal to us as you study the scriptures? Number one, you got the nature of God, and this is referred to as righteousness. Righteousness is the nature of God, but this is also available. To man. Like the Bible says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him. It was credited to him for righteousness. Number two, you find another nature in the Bible that's clear and revealed to us. What nature is that? The human nature. Man and his tendencies. Man and his abilities. Like the Bible tells us, Adam gave birth to a child after his kind. When he fell from glory, when he was driven out of the garden, he gave birth to a child after his own kind, not after God's kind. So you have the human nature. Then, as you study the Bible, you'd also realize that there's another kind of nature. It's called Satan's nature. And this nature began by the 
the angelic being called Lucifer. Like the Bible tells us, if you study in 1 John, he talks about Cain, who was of the devil. Like he says, you are of God. Meaning, you hail from God. You are a product. You are God's seed. The same way he says, Cain, and he that mothers his brother, he that hated his brother, is of the devil. You see, so there's, a, there's the devil's nature that's revealed to us also in scripture. And it's important you understand these three natures from God's perspective. And when you're dealing with the natural man and dealing with the natural nature, the Bible calls a natural man a man of sin, a sinful nature, nature. A man who is in constant rebellion against God. And at his best, he's trying to get God's attention. This is the reason we preach God's word. This is the reason we teach God's word. This is the reason why it's important to understand the gospel. Because, you see, the sinful nature produced religion in man. What religion? Man's search for God. Man's craving for a place and a presence he lost in the garden. A void inside man. He knows he used to have it. You know, it's like someone who, who used to own a car, a certain kind of car. Maybe it's a Bugatti, maybe it's a, a Mercedes. Whatever the car is, you used to own this car. And now for some reason, you lost it. You no longer own it. You could still understand how the car works. Have a sense of the feel of the car. But it's, there's a void because that car is no longer there. This is the intrinsic search in every man for God. Because you see, man was born in God created in God, lived in God, and came out of God into a body created or made and designed by God. Genesis chapter 1 into Genesis chapter 2 makes this very clear. But man lost his place, lost his presence because he yielded to Satan and his gimmicks and his schemes and obeyed Satan's words and became a slave to the devil and lost his authority over the world. You see, this is why it's important for us to, I'm telling you, it's important you got to understand this truth. And since then, man has been in search for what he lost. Yet, glory to God, Jesus came. He didn't come because we were many. He didn't die because we were many. No. He came because we were valuable to God. We were the reason for the creation. <laughs> you see, when you study God's word, what you'd find would amaze you. Angelic beings were designed and made to serve us. Not to be worshipped, to serve us. We are the only beings in all of God's creation, created in His class, with His abilities to think like Him, to talk like Him, to act like Him with His nature. What is nature? Righteousness. Well, man lost it, but thanks be unto God, Jesus came as a man, lived as a man, died as a man, 
went to hell as a man rose up from the dead having defeated satan in hell as a man go with a god ascended into heaven as a man showing us our possibilities and bringing us access into something even better than what man lost in the garden so our study of the doctrine of righteousness is so important because you see we study in the book of hebrews chapter 5 it does tell us that if you do not understand righteousness you are a baby hallelujah and so we began study up studying righteousness and i gave you certain definitions of or a definition of righteousness said so righteousness is the nature of god that gives you the ability, the power, the boldness to stand in the presence of God, man, and Satan without guilt, inferiority, or condemnation. And we went ahead and we studied uh, the different kinds of righteousness. Righteousness by faith. Righteousness by works or self-righteousness. Righteousness by the law. Then righteousness by nature. And we went ahead to look at the the benefits of righteousness and we looked at a, we did a deep dive on peace shalom it means wholeness and the power of control you're in charge and on petov regardless of what happens in your world hallelujah today we're looking at um power we began looking at that last week but we'll look more uh, about on power today. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 32 again. I said we're going to look at this scripture and we're going to, we're going to share a lot from this scripture this season. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 32. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 15, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness shall remain in the fruitful field, and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effects of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in the peaceable habitation, and in short dwellings, and in quiet resting places hallelujah when it shall hail coming down on the forest and the city shall be low in a low place blessed are ye that sow beside all waters that sent forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass he says until the spirit be poured up on, on, on us from on high until the spirit be poured upon us from on high so he says the outpouring of the Spirit will produce righteousness. And we saw the first, the, the first um, result of righteousness there, peace. Peace. And we talked about peace with God. Peace of God. And we talked about peace within and peace without i gave you scriptures to this regard joel chapter 2. let's see something here i said we're looking at power today hallelujah joel chapter 2 I want to begin reading from verse 21 is a good place to start even though we're going all the way to verse 28 he says fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the lord will do great things glory to god 
Where are you in your life? What are you going through in life? Hey, I've come this morning to announce to you that the Lord will do great things. He'll do great things in your family. He'll do great things with your finances. He'll do great things in your health. He'll do great things in your city. He'll do great things in your country. He'll do great things with your children. You may think they are recalcitrant. You may think they don't listen. You may think they may have even run away from home like a lady told me uh, last week. She called me, she said, Pastor, I don't know where my daughter is. She left home. And you could tell she was suffering from a broken heart. Listen, God will do great things. Because we prayed with her and we trust God and we know. Because it's happened, we, we got lots of testimonies like this. We know she's coming back home. She's keeping constant communication with her parents. See, because the word of God and the spirit of God can cause it to be so. Why? We got power. Untold power. Unimaginable power. Given to us of God. That's why we can announce these things and they can happen. Fear not. The Lord will do great things. Verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Oh, he was speaking prophetically about our day. Glory to God. It says a day is coming in the wilderness, in the dry places. There'll be so much green. There'll be so much productivity. Life couldn't have been better. Hey, because of something. And that's where we're going. Why is it? Why does he have the boldness to say these things? Look at the next verse, verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. How they That's the next one we're going to look at. Joy. Joy, glory to God. Joy as the benefit of righteousness. Then it says, Rejoice and be glad in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and it will cost to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. This is powerful. I, I could I could teach a whole month on this. He says, God, this is not your prayer. He causes this thing to happen. He says, Hey, you saw a glimpse of it. You saw a glimpse of it when you had the former rain moderately. Have you been there in your life? Where you See the power of God. Maybe you laid hands on yourself. You, you got a headache, a migraine, something. You laid hand on yourself and you got healed. You, and, you know, it's been happening after over a while. Then all of a sudden, he seemed to stop and you're wondering, did I commit anything? Did I do something wrong? Oh, God, why, 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 why don't I just pray and get the answer? Hey, no, listen. What happened was you, you had the former rain moderately. But he says he will cause the former rain and the latter rain together. That means it's going to be an oh boy, Kariste. It's, it's going to be a, an outpouring. Get ready, brothers and sisters. In these last days, this is what the Spirit of God has proposed to do with us. There's going to be a, an outpouring of the Spirit of God. And people will speak his word in strip malls. People will speak his word in the marketplaces. People will speak his word into corporate America and cop the corporate locations of the world. The word of God is going to go far in entertainment. Get ready. This world is about to see something like they've never seen before, I'm telling you. You see, as I'm, I'm saying these things to you, I feel the anointing of God's spirit welling up on my inside, confirming this word. It's going to happen. 
Because God says it's going to happen. God says it's going to happen. He showed us from his word. And we are living in those days. The days that Joel talked about. And we're coming to the, the climax of these days that Joel talked about. Hmm. Let's go to the next verse, verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. In other words, there'll be so much abundance. Don't believe the world when they talk about the scarcity. Don't believe the news when they talk about the dryness. They talk about the great resignation. They talk about the recession that's coming. They talk about the depression that's coming on the wall. They're talking about nations that are going to go broke in the world. That's true. But you see, the same rain that destroyed the world sustained the Noah and those in the ark. So fear not, child of God. It's not that days for you. It's days of power and testimony. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read on verse 25. And I will restore to you the years. This is a word for someone. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. For he had dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Can you say amen? Today, in the our in-person service, we are having an all-praise service. We're just coming to praise and worship our King because he deserves our praise and our worship. And we have Minister Priel Dede from Nigeria. He'll be he is already here with us. He's, he's around. He's going to be leading us in in heavenly praise and worship today. So if you live anywhere in the valley, you live in um, anywhere, and show you around, be at the place 122-13 West Bell Road. The address is scrolling on the screen. And show you are there. We're going to have a great time in God today. But it says you should eat and be satisfied. Hallelujah. Then look at the next verse. Verse 27. It says, And you shall know that I am the Lord in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Do you see that? Twice he says this. My people shall not be ashamed. Meaning the thing that's supposed to cause you shame is taken away. Maybe you've been barren and it's been causing you shame. He's taking it away. Maybe you've been broke trying to survive, not having money, and it's causing you shame. He's taking it away. Maybe you've been a failure at school, not having good grades. And it's bringing shame to you and your family. He's taking it away. Hallelujah. Look at verse 28. And this is what we've been coming all along. And it shall come to pass afterwards. That I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I'll show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be torn into darkness and the moon into blood before the day great, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, as in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem 
shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered, as the Lord had said, and the remnant upon the upon whom the Lord shall call. So he tells us, he pours out his spirit. And when his spirit is poured out, these are the necessary things that take place. Well, you flip over to the New Testament pour, uh, and you go to Acts chapter 2 from verse 15. He says, For these are not drunken as I suppose, saying it is but the third hour of the day. This is Peter responding. When the Holy Ghost had come. The Bible says, let's read it. I, I think it's, it, it's important that we read this. From verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Pentecost was a day, a feast day, a day uh, uh, of celebration in the Old Testament. It was one of the feasts given to the Jews. And I don't really understand why God's church and God's kids who are saved, born again, blood washed and blood bought will be celebrating Pentecost. You see, because those who were celebrating Pentecost were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They got saved, but were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They were only saved after those who got filled with the Holy Ghost preached the gospel to them. It tells me something. Pentecost is not for the church. God chose that day to introduce his spirit on the earth for a reason. And when you study uh, the feasts of Pentecost from the Old Testament, you understand why. Because you see, those feasts are a type and a shadow of our reality today. Praise God. So Peter was responding to them, and he says, we're not drunk, because when those celebrating Pentecost heard what was happening in the upper room, they came to see and hear these folks speaking things. The Bible says every man heard in their own language. That could only be by the supernatural act and power of God. Can you imagine 120 people talking at the same time? All you'd hear would be noise. You wouldn't form words from what 120 people are saying at the same time. Yet, the Bible tells us in verse... In verse... Um, Let's read that. Uh, in if you if you study in verse eleven, he says they were speaking the wonderful works of God. One hundred and twenty people speaking at the same time, and the guy from Phrygia and Paphidia and Egypt and Libya and Cyrene and Rome, Jews and proselytes from Crete and Arabians, they all heard. In their own tongue so the sound was translated in their own tongue the wonderful works of God the glorious things God is doing hallelujah well Peter responding to them let's begin reading on from verse 15 he says these are not drunken as you suppose seeing that it was the third hour of the day but this is that just spoken of the prophet Joel in shall come to pass in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on your on my servant and my handmaiden I'll pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy so this is one of the, the things 
that righteousness does for us. It gives us the ability to express power in words. And that's what prophecy is. Expressing power in words. Speaking words with power. Speaking words that will come to pass. Not speaking idle words. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. We'll come back here and I, I, I'll, I'll share a little more about prophecy. But let's see this from Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Hallelujah. Jesus said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. Jesus has all power now. And this power he has, he has given to us. Why? Because he tells them in verse 19, Go ye therefore. Therefore what in the power. What power? The power of heaven and earth. Why? We have his nature. His nature attracts power. His nature exudes power. In fact, Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. I want you to look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Verse 20, he says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So it's not just in sweet, nice talk. It's in power. And this power has been given to us. In Matthew chapter, in Mark chapter 16 from verse 15, it lets us know the things we can do with power. We speak in tongues. We lay hands on the sick and they recover would take up deadly things and they don't harm us. Power is available to us now. Question, what are you going to do with the power that's been available to you, that's been given to you? You see, there are different ways to express power. Do you know that there's power in your extremities? Like when you stretch out your hands, power is released. Do you know there's power in your eyes? And of course, there's power in your words. When you speak words, they ought to come to pass. This is the reason. Jesus said you will give accounts of every idle word that comes out of your mouth. Every idle word that comes out of your mouth, you will give account of it. Hallelujah. So be smart. Stay with God. Don't be jumpy. Don't go around looking for what you already have. You'll never find it. You see, Inside of you is all of God. And in all of God is all power there is. Study it for yourself in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 1. Power is available to you now. And if you're sick in your body, you have a problem with your eyes. You have a problem with your tummy. You have a problem with your neck. You have a problem with your knees. You have a problem with your feet. You have a problem uh, breathing. You have a problem with a sense of smell. You can lay your hands there right now. And bring restoration to your body. Why? Because power is in you. And you've got to use it. For his glory. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. 
And I declare in the name of Jesus that you will use what has been given to you to change your world in the mighty name of Jesus. But you see, if you're not born again, this power is not even available or accessible to you. And your wisdom is to come to him. Because with this power, you can change your family. With this power, you can change your community. With this power, you can change your relationship, make it better and sweeter. With this power, you can change your children. We are not disadvantaged. We cannot be disadvantaged. Hallelujah. So you're not born again. Jesus is not Lord of your life. And you want to make him Lord of your life right now. I want you to open your mouth, put your right hand on your chest, and I'm going to put words in your mouth, and I want you to repeat after me and mean it with all of your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you because you came into this world. You died for me. You took my place. Say, Father, right now, I believe in my heart. Jesus is Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth, you raised him from the dead. Say, so therefore, according to the scriptures, I boldly declare I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Say, so thank you, Father, for making me your child. Say, so I receive eternal life into my spirit right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you say that prayer, God ahead you. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. We want to know you. We want to know that you said that prayer and you got saved. So send us an email. Prayer at what culture? That all is the email you want to you want to send an email to is the address you want to send an email to. Or you can write us. Write us through the post office. 1711 Sun City, Arizona 85372 is a, is a mailing address. And sure, you write us, let us know that you gave your heart to, the, to Christ. We're going to send you materials that will help you as you grow in God. Thank you so much for joining us today. If the Lord uh, impresses on your heart to give and support what we're doing, or you want to give an offering, if you're a member of what culture, you can use uh, our PayPal handle, paypal.me slash what culture. Um, you can also text to give. Okay, and, and that's the, that's the the text the the text text seven seven nine seven seven what culture to seven seven nine seven seven or you text what culture to eight three three two four five 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 two three and you'll be able to give that we can also go to our website and give the, dot go to www.give.whatculture.org and you'll be able to give your tithes or give your offerings that way we look forward to seeing you next week sunday and until we come your way next week sunday don't you ever ever forget it the word of god is living it's active and working in you. God bless you.